happens. Got a mind of its own. So <laughs> when he's away, he's by himself. It's not me. Hallelujah. God blesses those who patiently endure testing the temptation. Afterwards, they will, re will receive the crown of, of life that God has promised to those who love him. Amen. James 1.12. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> but what I told you, what I, what I told them <clears throat> was, obey me and I will be your God <clears throat> and you shall be my people. Only do as I say, and all shall be well. Jeremiah 7, 23. Hallelujah. I just thank God. I should have gotten a ticket on my way here. I was late coming to church, and I was speeding, and I was expecting a ticket, and I thought, phew. <laughs> Did you repent? Did you? Uh, <laughs> I said, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't travel that fast. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't think to repent at the time. I was just glad to get the <laughs> <laughs> dance. Good morning, Matt and Regina. Thank you for all the work you guys did in the back. Amen. Yes. And I want to say that I prayed about it this morning. I'm expecting a miracle. For somebody in this house today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Inviting the Holy Spirit here to do whatever He wanted to do. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You notice that all the songs are about the love of God, yes. and Amen. the lack of fear, and things like that. And yeah. I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about the lack of fear today. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We are designed to live by faith, yes. not yes. by fear. Hallelujah. Yes. By design. Yes. We are. Focused. We are here to function by faith, not by fear. Yeah. And also, um, uh, Ellis and Danny did the floor back there. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Gina did the yes. decorating. Yes. The floor and the painting and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> I just figure what I'm doing is you know, that's what it is. Go back there. Looks good. If the victory belongs to God, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, and it's not my victory, then it's his, right? So if it's his victory, it must be his battle. Yes. Just thought I'd throw that in. That is good. I think I got that off the TV. You know, if you watch the right TV, you get some really cool sayings, you know? And then if you read books, you get cool sayings. And then if you read the Bible, you really get good sayings. I want you to know there's a lots of in, uh, politically incorrect statements we can make. Uh -huh. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. That's a politically incorrect statement, right? Uh, do good to those who persecute you. <laughs> Overcome evil with good. So I'd throw these in. These are so fun to say. Yes. And when you begin to act them out, then you become somebody who's uh, portraying Jesus Christ to the nations. Yes. I want you to know the worst thing. The worst things get. The brighter we can shine. Yes. I mean, I see a lot of people griping. Not that myself ever gripes. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I see a lot of people griping about what's going on and oh this and all that. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is still the King. Woo! Yes. God is still on the throne. That's right. And I, the enemy might have a plan, but God has a plan. God's plan is bigger and better yes. than the enemy's yes. plan. And God is well able to work out his plan. Yes. Yes. So don't despair. Don't get worded out. God is still God. He is still good. Praise the Lord. So if it's his, if it's his victory, it's his battle. Praise the Lord. So, could I get some help with some scriptures today? Yes. Okay, somebody look up Romans 8, 14. Romans 17. 13 or 14? Romans 8, 14. I'll look up 1 John 4. Somebody get for me Luke 
1, 74 and 75. Got it. Second Timothy 1, 7. Okay. Oh. Psalm 73, 19. Okay. And uh, I think Psalm 88, 15 and 16. Alright. And 1 John 4, 12. Got well, it. I got that one. I'm, I'm here anyway. <laughs> okay. okay. See, I was obedient, but I didn't have to do obedience. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See that? A lot of time. Now that is a, that is a big deal. If you're obedient to what God is telling you, and you're and you're moved by the promptings of the Holy Spirit, sometimes God will tell you to do something, and you honor Him by saying yes, and then you, you don't have to do it. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. Because it's already gotten done. Yeah. A lot of times that happens. Yeah, yeah. Praise the yeah. Lord. Uh, it, it just a lot of times. You guys, could, you, you, every one of you could go into the details of the whole thing, I know. Yes. So 1 John 4, 17 through 19. That's you. That's me? Of course. <laughs> 1 John 4, 17 through 19. Matt's going to read. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because yes. as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. <coughs> Because fear involves torment. But he who fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Yes. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Now in Romans 8, 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him our Father, for His Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are His children, we are His heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share His glory, we must also share His suffering. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. You know, Jesus' suffering came from what He was doing right. Yes. So if you're suffering from what you're doing wrong, it ain't His fault. Right. That's, okay. right. right. That's right. <laughs> but if you're suffering for what you've done right, God rests on you. His glory rests on you. Amen. So in Luke uh, 1, 74 and 75, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. God wants us to be able to serve him without fear of all our enemies. Uh, I don't know about you, but there are a few enemies, okay? Yes. The enemy is the enemy. His name is the devil. Yeah. That's the ones we fight against, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness in this age, etc. That's who we fight against, so if it has skin on, it does, isn't necessarily your enemy. Now, I want you to know there are some people who hate you for loving Christ. That's yes. right. They hate you for loving Christ because they are of another spirit, of an yes. anti-Christ spirit. Yes, sir. They are of their father, the devil, the same one that killed Jesus and nailed him to the cross, okay? Right. Yep. That, those kind of people. But you don't fight against flesh and blood, neither did Jesus fight against those people. Now watch this. In 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So are you afraid this morning? No. Hallelujah. <coughs> Psalm 73, 19. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors? Yeah. Yeah, swept away by terrors. I want you to know there's a lot of people being swept away by, away by terrors yeah. in this day and age. Yes. Yeah. Terrors. I mean, really afraid to death. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you see them on the street. You see them when you talk to them. There are people are being swept away by terrors. And we could go into the rest of that verse, but it's not where I want to concentrate on today. In Psalm 88, 15 and 16. I have been afflicted and ready to die from my youth. I suffer your terrors. I am distraught. Your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. <laughs> so, so before the cross, I want you to know that if you weren't obeying the law, you were really toast. Yeah. <clears throat> So the terror of God was a big thing. Now that the fear of God will keep you from sinning. That's right. But it will not lead you to righteousness. 
Now watch. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you. First John 4, 12. I got that one. He says, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. So what happens when we hate people? If we hate people, we don't love God. We make right. We're liars. That's right. right. If we say we love God yes. and hate people, yes. we become liars. That's right. Hallelujah. Because when the love of God <coughs> impregnates your being and comes into your spirit, and you start hating people, it diminishes and it eliminates the love of God. Mm -hmm. It's one of the only things it does. Unforgiveness will really goof you up. Yes, it does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unforgiveness will goof you up. Not only unforgiveness for other people, unforgiveness for yourself. That's right. Yeah. That's unforgiveness to God. Yeah. Some people are so mad at God, they, they, they're just simply beside themselves. Yeah. And destroying themselves with it. Mm -hmm. I wrote down here, uh, if you love one another, love is perfected in us. Love attracts, fear repulses. Yes. Okay? Love and fear coexist only where love is not perfected. Love and fear coexist only where love is not perfected. <coughs> Dread of punishment is designed to deter us from sin. But it can't lead us to righteousness. A sense of duty maybe can. Don't you know, if you just do things out of duty... That will lead you to righteousness. Thank you. Okay? But, if you do things out of your love for God and other people, that will bring righteousness into your life. That's yes. right. Praise That's the Lord. Right. Yes. So duty is a good thing. I want you to know that. You don't get into a, some legalistic duty thing and right. think you're going to win the favor of God. You do say, I get up and go to work in the morning, not because I feel like it. Right. Sometimes not even because I love God, but it, it's my duty to get my butt out of bed and go to where I need to go and do what I need to do. I need to take the garbage out at times. I need to feed the chickens. Right. I do what I do. I don't love the chickens. Right. I do it because my life, wife likes chickens. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't feed the cat because we. I love the cats. I feed the cats because they're outside and Regina likes them. Lord. I like them because they kill mice. I don't That's like right. them because they're fuzzy and things. Right? So, uh, Regina says, oh, you're so Regina says, you're the book of Regina. I like that book. That's right. Now, fear of punishment is in itself punishment by anticipation. Fear of punishment is in itself punishment by anticipation. Okay? If you fear the punishment of God, you already... You're already being punished just by the anticipation yeah. of it. That's right. When we are born again, we get rid of this thing that says God's going to punish us. Right. God will discipline you out of love and you will change yeah. with humility and peace. But he will, He's not going to punish you. Oof, right. That's not the point. If you are punishing your children for doing stuff, you're in the wrong. If you're disciplining them so that they might break, make good choices later on, this is a good thing. Yes. But just to whip them, you know. I knew a lady one time... She lived over in a motel over here, and she'd come out about once, and she'd be watching soap operas. It's terrible. She'd come up about once an hour with a hanger and whop on her grandkids because they had to be doing something wrong. And so I talked to her about this, and she got saved and set free by the power of God. She began to change. But she just did that because she knew they had done something wrong. And they had. Okay? That is it. When God comes to you and discipline, He's not, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We deserve punishment. That doesn't mean God goes it out all the time. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. Now, these scriptures, yeah, these, the fear of God, the fear of God causes us to depart from sin. Yes. But it won't lead us into righteousness. The fear of God causes us to not sin. Okay? But it won't, it won't bring righteousness. Guilt, shame, things like that aren't very good motivators. No. That's right. Love is That's a great right. motivator. That's right. Okay? Amen. This is not a scripture that gives an excuse for us to be stupid. Okay? This scripture about uh, the love, perfect love casts out all fear. If, if we let something else cast out our fear, we may become, uh, uh, have liberties taken with God and become an irreverent, even callous. You see people coming out of the closet instead of cleaning it because they've made their fear. They've let something else cast out their fear. 
Okay, they're not afraid anymore because they've come out of the closet, decided to legalize their sin or justify their sin. Mm -hmm. Now they're no longer afraid. Down inside somewhere, they probably are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I've never seen more miserable people than those people that are that are sinning against God and thinking they'll get away with it. Those are not happy folks. Yeah. No. No. And you notice them. Okay. They're not happy. Okay, because they've allowed something else to cast out their fear rather than their love for God. Okay, if we allow fear to lead us to love the one who has delivered us from it and given us his spirit to drive it out, perfect love casts out fear. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Let him Amen. who did it, do it, and fall in love with him, let that cast out our fear. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, you should have fear. <laughs> you know, what should yeah, make you afraid? Is. Lying to God. You mean, yeah, I wrote yes. down to you, those who claim to love God and hate people. Those people need to be afraid. Yes. Okay? Okay. How about, this I wrote down because I read this this week in a, in a little book. Um, <laughs> the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Okay? Yeah. Well, I guess, guess I can't trust my heart then. Wait a minute. In Hebrews 8, if you'd go there with me, I'm whipping over there, right before James, right before 9. <laughs> Hebrews 8, 10. Hebrews 8, verse 10. It says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, when God gives you a brand new heart, as it says in Ezekiel, we'll learn here in a minute. If somebody wants to look up Ezekiel 36, 26. When we're seeking God, we receive these inner promptings from the Holy Spirit, right? Some people come against those inner promptings because they think their heart is deceitful, and they can't believe their heart, and they can't trust their heart. Where else is God going to speak to you but in your spirit, in your heart? Mm -hmm. That's how the Holy Spirit speaks to you, yes. not only through His Word, but, in, but by promptings of the Holy Spirit. And usually when those promptings come, the first prompting you get is right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're not waiting for a no. If God says yes the first time, don't go on and on and on. Right. It isn't my heart that goose me up, it's my brain. Yes. Right. I start thinking about stuff, yeah. rolling it over, and wondering if that was right. Man, it might not have been God. No, my you know. Yeah. If you're walking with God and you're worshiping God and you're seeking the Lord, what do you get the promptings in your heart of from the Holy Spirit go yes. with it? Yeah. Okay, you don't have a deceitful heart anymore. Yeah. That's right. Okay? Yeah. It comes right out of that renewed heart. The thing you usually gets in your way is your mind. Okay. Yeah. I'm afraid I'll do the wrong thing. What does Ezekiel 36, 26 say? I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Behold, it's a new covenant. We're living in the new covenant we days. Are. We are. Right Jesus. now, this is the day we live in, the day that God has given men new hearts. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's put his spirit in you. He's changed your heart. He's wrote his laws on your mind. The things you are thinking at this point in time, you know right from wrong. Yes. Right. That's right. There are a lot of folks without the Spirit of God don't know right from wrong, and they are confused. Yes, yeah, they are. And it's up to us to help them out once in a while. If they're living in some stupid way, help them out. My buddy, uh, I used to have a roommate, and he knew scriptures really good. And he would go to work, and he would talk to people, and they'd say something to him. He says, well, it says in the Word, in Ezekiel 36, 26, that God has given us. And he, chapter and verse... Mm -hmm. He laid it up and they just go, oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to say? Yeah. yeah. You can say, I don't believe in the Bible. Okay, that's one yeah. thing. But if you have any kind of faith at all or any kind of belief in God at all, somebody lays the Bible on you, you're going to say, well, that's what it says. I guess that's what it says. <laughs> you can't argue with the Word. You can't argue with truth. That's right. That's right. The people who will argue with truth really haven't read the Bible, don't believe in the Bible, and just have turned their back on God. Okay. It's a new covenant day. Our part in this relationship is to follow and flow. Now watch this. In, in Philippians 2.13 it says, God is in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yes. What is our part in that? To flow with that. Okay? God is willing it. God is doing it. What we have to do is flow with the promptings he's giving us. 
Hallelujah. Flow with the word he's given you. Flow with what God is doing in your life. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want you to know when, when Regina gives a, a message in tongues or I give a message in tongues or somebody prophesies and things like that, they aren't cocky. That's right. They're scared to death every time. <laughs> I am anyway. It makes me so nervous when God tells me to give a message yes. in tongues. I'm thinking this can't be from God. This isn't from God. It's not flowing out of this hand. <laughs> I, I can talk myself right out of it. But you know when the Spirit of God is yeah. telling you to do something. That's right. We come here on Wednesday night and we minister. And somebody sits down in the chair. We ask the Holy Spirit to come. And then people begin to prophesy. Wow. Give what God has for that person at that point in time. And profound things come out of people's mouth. Profound things come out of non-profound people. <laughs> How do I know that? Because some things have come out of me and I'm not a profound guy. Hallelujah. So we invite the Holy Spirit. Who else is going to... If you invite the Holy Spirit to come, He's such a lover, He just shows up. Yes. And what the first thing you get in your mind or in your heart, you speak that out and allow God to do what He wants with it. Yes. But I'm afraid I might blow it. You probably will. There's a... There's a, 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 a school in California where they said, you have got to go out and as you minister, uh, one of the main things you need to do is fail at least three times. Mm -hmm. You need to miss it at least three times. Why does he say that? So when they do, it's okay. Yeah. Okay? They can go ahead and do and, and move out in the Holy Spirit what they think the Holy Spirit is doing. And if they miss it, okay, that's... That's one for me. Okay, I miss. It. They don't want to miss it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. But he gives them the the freedom to blow it. Yeah, it's okay. If you don't have freedom enough to blow it, you're not going to do anything. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You're going to think every That's time right. you yes. say something yeah. wrong, God gonna kill you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got a new heart. God is well able to write His desires on it. Oof. Hallelujah. When you love God, it's easy to believe He's leading you. You're designed. You're designed to live by faith, not fear. When you love God, it's easy to believe He's leading you. Did you know there's a study that guy did with 500 adults, different society, different economical and things like that. And children are born with two fears. One is a fear of falling, and the other is... Fear of, fear of the father. <laughs> fear of the father, yeah. I forget what it is. Kids have two fears. Loud noises. Loud noises and fear of falling. The two, that they are born with that, that's just the way it is. Now you can train that on them really fast because they have kids sitting on glass and looking down through it. You know, you can help a kid get rid of those fears. But this guy did, the, did this study and they, they worked it out. They were sharing 7,000 fears. <laughs> 7,000 fears, okay? That's 6,998 6, fears they had to learn. Wow. Yeah, I said the same thing, we wow. It yeah. Say it backwards, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's right, okay. And as you're falling, go, wow. Yeah, that's right, if you turn it upside down. But can you, can you imagine that? We learn fear. By the way, we learn shame also. <laughs> Right. We learn shame. Yeah. Kids learn shame from parents. They lean, learn shame from their peers. They learn shame other places. But shame is a learned thing. Shame is not a natural flow. Right. Fear is not a natural flow. Right. Oh, praise Come the on. Lord. So Genesis 3.10, okay? It says, uh, they hid in the garden because they knew they were naked. Yeah. Adam said, I'm afraid. <laughs> Why are you afraid? Because I'm naked over here. <laughs> Who told you he was naked? I don't know, it's probably the devil, but the woman. <laughs> okay. The woman. Every fear is born out of feeling being cut off from God. Every fear is born out of feeling like you're cut off from God. Otherwise, why would you fear anything? That's right. If you aren't cut off from God, ain't nothing going to bother you. That's right. If you are saved, if God loves you, why would you be afraid of anything? Afraid of dying? I ain't afraid of dying. Afraid of this, afraid of that. I'm afraid of a Jew, brother. <laughs> that is a learned fear. <laughs> it's it's only one, I have. <laughs> one landed on Regina and bit her once. After that, she was 
a little afraid of them. Little yeah, bitters. It's bitter. June bug bitter. I didn't know June bugs bit. Wow. Bitter. Like a horse slide. Wow. Took, they hurt. Took a big chunk out of her, you know? I thought, yeah. okay. I'm done. I don't like June bugs either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it because they got the sticky feet, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Big, man. Yeah. Anyway, there's a little. They hiss at you, yeah, that's yes. right. Okay, so those fears are learned. Believe it or not, they are. Okay. Yeah. In Hebrews 2.15, I got it right here. Hebrews 2.15 it says, um, in 14 it says, this, Inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him with the power of death, that is the devil, yes. had the power of death, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death will subject you to bondage. Oh, there are many, many, many people in bondage today to the fear of death. Look around. Yes. It's just that way it is. I, like I said last week, I have people when you're walking towards you, when you're in the store, they're walking towards you, and they, you're coming this way, and they're coming this way, and they go like this. Yeah. I mean, they're scared of me. <laughs> That's right. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> they're afraid of me. You know? Hi, how you doing? No, they're not they're not me. Yeah. no eye contact anymore. Yeah, it's tough, man. I say hi to him anyway. Yeah. I'm like the little, remember the tar baby? Briar rabbit? Briar rabbit, the tar baby? When Briar rabbit walked by the tar baby, he said, Hey, how you doing? And he went by me. He didn't say nothing. He come back and says, give him another chance. Hey, how are you doing? And the third time he says, you better say hey back to me. I'll punch you right in the face. And so he punched me in the face. He got stuck. Remember that? Because it was, it was, it was a courteous thing to say hey back. Once you know you go out by a lot of people nowadays, they don't want to even say howdy. This is Nevada. This is Fernley. This is the rural area. You could say howdy back. You don't have to be afraid. The kids, the kids, oh, don't talk to strangers. Show your kids how to say howdy to a stranger. Not to talk to them, not get them a conversation with them, but to say howdy back for crying out loud. Yes. Jeepers, creepers. My kids are not going to be afraid of people. They just weren't either. They just, <laughs> to the fault, of course, but <laughs> you teach your kids to be so confident about stuff, they ain't scared of nothing. They just aren't scared of nothing. Right. But I told my kids, if anybody ever grabs you or anything, you start screaming just as loud as you can, start gouging out his eyes and kicking him in the nuts and doing whatever else That's you right. can do. That's right. Just do it to him. You know? Right. Don't be turning the other cheek at that point in time. You scream just as loud as you can. Right. Hallelujah. Bite, scratch. So, all right. Kick. So in Romans 5, if you don't agree with those things, you can just put them by the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Calm it down. I don't know, what would you do? No, I, I agree. Definitely. I don't want my kids to be afraid or walk in fear. That's right. I don't want them to be aware, okay, and not, not be stupid about things, but not to be afraid. That's my right. dad told me one time, he says, you know, there's always something to be afraid of. He says, when he was a kid, it was the, it was the uh, uh, Italian gang, <laughs> you know. Now it's the, the Mexican gang. <laughs> You know? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, you know. There's, there's always something to be afraid of, but that is such a small portion of our population. That's it's right. It's such a small portion of our population. You're afraid all the time. My God, you might never run into a gang member. Uh, I'm I mean, Italian. Yeah. The, the, what is it? Uh, 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 a man who's fearful dies a thousand deaths. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, a guy who isn't afraid only dies once. That's right. That's good. Anticipation of dying will let you live in fear your whole life and bring you into bondage. Mm -hmm. There are people that will not go out of the house right now. Right. Okay? Right. And I know some people, it's a good thing you're not going out of the house because <laughs> it's, a, it's not a very special time. You know, if you go out of the house, you might get some disease and die. Yeah, you don't want to do that. But you can't live in fear. Fear is not part of God's plan. We live by faith. And, and I tell people in this church, if you're, a, if, you, if, you, if you're sick, stay the heck home. If your kids are sick, keep them home. 
That's right. If you're in danger, <laughs> wear a big, thick mask over your face so you don't get nothing. Thank you. You can be smart enough to not be stupid. Thank but, you. But I'm not going to force anybody into uh, uh, doing things. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to force you. It's a place where we wear masks. It's a place you. where we don't wear masks. No, this is a place where God shows up and people are free to do what they yeah, want. This is right. America. Thank this you. is not some Thank third you. world country at this point in time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, in 517 it says this. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Woo! Hallelujah. For what the last Adam did was a lot greater than what the first Adam did. Right. The first Adam brought us under the bondage of yes. sin yes. and yes. death. The second Adam released us. I want yes. you to know what he did and what he's doing now is far more greater than what the first Adam did. That's right. right. Exactly. Hallelujah. Well, Adam and sin and stuff like that. No, Jesus. The cross. Forgive. Amen. Forgive. Okay. Set us free. Hallelujah. Okay. He's a greater king. He's a greater Adam. Greater okay. King. No. So, so, you want some scriptures to read? Okay. Matthew 25, 25. Okay. No. The girl got it. Uh, Psalm 27, 1. Got it. He's got it. Psalm 118, 6. I got it. Isaiah 51, 12. Hebrews 13, 6. Okay. And Psalm 56, 3. Now these are just little things okay. about fear, okay? Mm -hmm. So in Matthew 25, 25, it says this. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. <laughs> fear is always hiding. Adam. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Adam, hid in the garden. Yep. Because he's afraid. This guy, his Lord gave him some, some money. God bless you. Gave him some money and he hid it. Why? Because he was afraid. Yes. If he would have knew who his master actually was, that his master was a, a loving, powerful person who wanted him to invest. When God gives you something, he wants you to invest it. He wants you to yes. invest your life. He wants you to invest your talents. Yep. He wants you to invest your money. He wants you to invest everything you are into the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. That's Otherwise, right. you're just kind of faking it out. Fear is always hiding something. Fear. I, we're, we're doing a Bible study in here uh, uh, Sunday afternoons, uh, right after lunch, whenever it, we get back from lunch. And it's a Bible study called uh, Every Man's Battle. And if you men want to come to that, you can. There's a book you can get. Now, I got three of them already. And it's to deal with uh, sexual sins. Okay? If you're caught in sexual sin. It's a Bible study for that, and it's, uh, unlike the Ed Cole books, it's, it's about uh, accountability and things like that. So if you men want to come, you can, okay? But uh, anyway, it's a commitment enough to get a book anyway. Now, the first time uh, me and Wes and, and uh, Chris did this, um, there were 15 guys that showed up the first day. About the first <laughs> week out, there was three. <laughs> <laughs> you three? Yep. Why? Because it was real. Because it was about to get people free. And they did not want to do what they had to do to get free. That's right. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to do some things. Can I testify that book, too? Yeah. Um, I came in here, been delivered from Pernambu free, but still, you know. And then we'll walk on Walmart and you've got the stuff hanging out, you know? <laughs> yeah. I get it. I'm driving down the road after going through this book and getting serious about it. And I saw this girl, good looking girl, uh, and it was summertime, some stuffy hanging out. She's walking two dogs. And the first thought that came to my mind is those are really two beautiful dogs. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 wow. God's I good. I was like, God delivered. I was going, yeah. 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 I started, yeah. It I worked. Was after I really delivered me. I didn't really notice the stuff that's good hanging out till later mm. till later <laughs> 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 my friend uh, um, Jack Bernard my brother's wife's brother when he got saved he was at a uh, Billy Graham crusade he's, and they got him a seat up in the choir because he was late and they well let's just leave and this guy grabbed him and said hey you guys need a seat 
Yeah. So he brought him up and sat him in the choir. Nice. <laughs> God thing, right? So he's sitting up in the choir, and the reason they went there is to scope out the girls. Because he knew Christian girls, you know, they're all... Yeah. Anyway, he went to scope out the girls. And when he was sitting there, a girl walked by, and there's worshiping God, and first a girl walked by, and he, and, he, and he said, he said in his mind, he says, you shouldn't be looking at that girl like that. And that thought was so foreign to him, he said, we got to get down there and get saved. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. God nailed him like that, and it was so foreign to him, he just went, whoa! It's just like that, what you're saying. You know, once you get free, you're free. Praise the Lord. So sometimes it takes work, sometimes. Okay. So in Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Woo! Hallelujah. 118.6. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Amen. That's right. Isaiah 51.12. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man who will die, of the son of man who will be made like grass? Ooh. Hebrews 13, 6. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? That's right. Psalm 56, 3. God's got this. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. I do four also. Yeah. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? There you go. So if you're afraid of anything about people, mm -hmm. yes. go to the word. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says in Romans 8.31, it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Right. And I wrote down here, Do you believe he is for you? Yes. yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you believe he is for you, like the scripture says, and all of these other scriptures are true, how now then should we live? Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. I wrote down here, do you think the enemy has a plan? God has a plan for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your city, for your nation. God has a plan. In Hebrews 8.12, it says, God will remember our sins no more. God will remember your sins no more. Okay? A lot of people get into this place where they're so afraid because they've done stuff wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? They've dwelt in condemnation all their lives. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. He has made you the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay? Some people think that God is recording all your bad stuff. <laughs> God is not recording your bad stuff. The thing He is saving is your tears in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Wow. As you break your heart before the Lord, and you're, He saves those things in a bottle for crying out loud. God is recording the the things you do in righteousness, the uh, the things you do. He, he puts Get your jewels in your crown, and and you, it'll be better for you. But if you are afraid and never do anything for the Lord because you're afraid you'll do it wrong, there's no glory there for that. You get to. You get to have more glory. You can have as much glory as you want. You can do so many things here that God will be pleased with you all the time. That's right. Why? Just because you're going for it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Just trying. What are you pondering on today? Uh, what nothing. Do you ponder? Nothing. Does what you think about all day make you want to love and worship Jesus more? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. What value have you placed on him? Or do you place value on your performance to do the things right that it's called you to do? In John 12, and I'm almost done here. This is Luke. I've got to go to John's after that. On John 12, 1 through 5, it says, Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There he made him supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spiker, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, 
who would betray him said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, because he was a thief. He had the money box. He used to take stuff from it. Okay? Now, this, okay. Judas saw the value of the oil. He might even saw a little value in feeding the poor. Okay? Okay? But he failed to see the value of Jesus Christ himself. He failed to see the value of Christ. A lot of us will see a value of uh, clothing the naked, uh, eating, the, eating the hungry, giving drink to those who need it. Uh, uh, our horizontal is really good. But when it comes to our value of Jesus Christ, I mean, we have people over helping us at the pantry just love feeding people, but they have no idea who Jesus Christ is. They don't have any value for Christ. They just value us because we value people who are hungry and want to feed them. And this is, so we, in that place, always get together and pray beforehand. Yes. And usually some of the gospel comes out in there. Some of our love for Christ comes out in there. So sure. people begin to understand why we do what we do there. Yes. Right. It's important. The key to doing right is knowing you are loved. Mm -hmm. And His grace is powerful. Kids who are loved and know they're loved are confident, fulfilled children. Down the road, they do a lot better. In Psalm 30, verse 5, he says, His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In His favor for a lifetime. When you know you are loved, when you are disciplined, you don't cower. You take it with humility from a loving hand because you know it's only for your good. Anybody <coughs> here ever had a dad? Some dads were really crappy dads. Nowadays, it's really hard to find a really good dad. But Hello. if you had a halfway decent dad, your dad disciplined you. He, I feared and loved my dad. Because I knew if I really screwed up, it was coming. But I didn't hide from him. Because I knew that whatever he did to me was going to be good. I knew my dad had died for me in a drop of a hat. Just like that. He'd give his life for me just like that. So I knew I was loved. I knew I was valued. Therefore, when he came to me and straightened me out, I was glad. I used to brag. In fact, I had a kid over in the park once. I told you this story long ago. I had a kid over in the park once. He had a Coke bottle. And there used to be a standpipe right there with concrete around it. And he went like this and he raised that bottle up. Look at me right in the eye. He raised that bottle of Coke up like this. I said, don't you break that bottle. I'll spank you. And he went like this one. Pow! And just shattered it all the pieces. I went over there and spun him around. Quack, quack, give him two on the butt. He went. Yep. <laughs> like that. It was just after that. <laughs> after that, he hung around me a lot because he liked me. Yeah. Okay? But he used to tell people, you know, Matt spanked me. <laughs> he was proud. He's proud that somebody cared enough to straighten him that's out. That's right. See, that's what we get from our dads. That we get. That's what we get from God. When God disciplines us, we brag on Him doing it to us. We brag on Him for straightening us out. We don't run around and say, "Oh, God's mean." He does that. Okay. He doesn't crush your spirit. He straightens your sorry butt out so you can make good decisions later on in life. Praise the Lord. Uh, Proverbs third. 3.12 says, He corrects a child in whom He delights. Mm -hmm. God delights in you, therefore He disciplines you. Okay? Judas thought the life of Jesus was worth about 30 pieces of silver. That's what the life of Jesus... And when he found out that he was really wrong, he ran out and hung himself on a tree. You see, he didn't have to hang himself on a tree. Jesus was on the way to the tree anyway. To die for his sins on a tree. Judas did not have to hang himself. That's Why right. did he do it? Because he didn't understand the love of Christ. He didn't understand. He let his guilt get to him. He tried to pay for his own sins. Ah, Mary gave up her most valued per, value possession, possession. Possession. She gave that bottle of spiker worth a year's wages. The best thing she had. She gave it to Jesus and anointed his feet. Right. And heard the smell come up, and Jesus goes, dude, man, 300 denarii. He knew exactly what it was worth. <laughs> you know? And that, 
he valued that more. Judas didn't have to hang himself, okay? No. We are still trying to pay for our sins with good deeds. Sometimes. Okay? Guilt, shame, condemnation, self-destructive behavior. These are not the best motivators for a righteous life. Out of these come fear, anxiety, sleeplessness, psychosis is a result of trying to pay for your own sins. Guilt and shame are not good. Jesus paid the price. Put a value on that. Yes. That's right. So punishing yourself is kind of a moot point when you realize what Jesus has already done. Value the one who died for you. Love the one who first loved you. The gospel is good news. Turn back to Christ right now and stop this other stuff of trying to pay for your own sins. And get out of this thing where every time you do something wrong, God is going to beat you up. This is the gospel of Christ. This is a new covenant. It's a brand new thing that God is doing. Run quickly to the throne of grace that you might receive mercy to help in time of need. Why would you need mercy? We need mercy. Yeah, we need mercy because we're screwing up. Mercy. Yeah. Why else would you run to the throne of grace to receive mercy to help? Mercy is what you need when you've goofed up. So he says, you have a high priest. You do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feelings of your infirmities, but was in all ways tempted just like you, yet without sin. So run quickly to the throne of grace to receive mercy, yeah. all right, to help in time of need. Mercy. Praise the Lord. Everybody needs mercy. Yes. So not only get it, give it. Yes. yes. It's important. Yes. First John 2, 1 and 2 says, we have... Uh, uh, these things I write unto you that you sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is the propitiation for our sins. He's already done it. You have an advocate, a, a defense attorney. And I wrote down here, how did Jesus do it? How did he stay away from sin? He knew of his Father's love and favor. He knew who God was. He knew that God was, not just because he was doing everything right, Okay, now watch this. Peter, James, and John, who didn't do everything right, how did they do it? How did they stay? How did they go and get crucified and sawn in half and chopped up in little bits and things like that? How did they do it? They knew the favor of their father. Yeah. Yeah. They we weren't were functioning in fear any longer. They were functioning by faith, and they knew God loved them. That's they right. The value. That's right, and they knew the value of Jesus Christ and what he'd done. Hallelujah. And they loved him. They weren't doing this because they weren't even doing it out of duty. They were doing it because they're in love with Jesus. Yes. You fall in love with Jesus, sin will drop off you like nothing. That's right. Put all your faith, put all your faith in that. Yeah. yeah. Put all your concentration in that. Put all your uh, energy into that, and this other stuff will take care of itself. That's, That's right. right. Okay. That's right. You fall in love with Jesus, the enemy, he don't like you anyway. That's, That's right. right. So why spend time with him? Why acknowledge him? Yeah. You know, the only time you acknowledge him is when you're casting him out of somebody. Yeah. The only time you acknowledge him is put up your shield of faith when he throws his guard at you. That's it's right. the only time you acknowledge him. You don't got to mess with him very much. That's right. Concentrate on Jesus Christ and what he's done. We do not fight against flesh and blood. That's right. So fight on that plane. In the spiritual plane where Christ is exalted to the right hand of God. Sent back his Holy Spirit to empower us. Arm yourself with the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shoes of the That's preparation right. of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. Clothe yourself in those things. What is it we're doing? We're concentrating. Who is our helmet? Jesus. Who is our righteousness? Jesus. Who is our truth? Jesus. Who is our shoes? Jesus. Who is our sword? Jesus. Who is our faith? Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. You concentrate and focus on Jesus Christ. Then, then, you can fight the enemy. And the enemy, yeah. you know why you got to fight him? Because you're that close to his, his gates. That's yeah. right. That close to the gates. Like I said last week, some want to dwell within the sound of chapel bells. I want to run a mission a yard from the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. Run to the battle. Huh? Run to the battle. So running away. Run to the battle. It's going to be a battle anyway. That's right. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you for showing us how to overcome evil with good. Yes. Help us this week, Lord, as we, uh, as we, uh, go forward. I'm not going to say that, Lord. <laughs> if, if we fail, Lord, cause us to keep our eyes on you anyway. 
Help us to understand that yes. you love us no matter what. Yes. We honor you today, God. Thank God. Lord, we're not, we're not doing this so we can get away with sin, Lord. That's we're right. doing this so we don't have to. Yes. Thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I Praise the Lord, man. Can you pray over that, please? Okay. God, we just, we just ask you to multiply this money that we're able to give to your kingdom, God. Where are you going? Grow it, God. We love you, so we give to you, God, because you gave to us first, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So I love the Lord. You know I love the Lord. Go ahead. Yeah, but I'm a foodie. Yes. So, how many went back there when did you get it? Oh, absolutely. I'm more afraid of God than I am anybody else. That's right. That's where I. That's where I get stuck. Right. Don't get stuck. Just allow the fear of God to keep you in the and then go fall in love with it. People got it all wrong. They fear Satan, and we should be fearing God. The fear of God, not, not no one else. God, God's got this. God's got this. And the, part of the reason he says that is so that we won't be afraid of anybody else. Yeah, doesn't the whole scripture say, "Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, artistic art, but evil is understanding." Understanding. Yeah. Yeah. To depart from evil is understanding. So if it's the beginning of wisdom, it is, it is, it is the end. Perfect love casts out all fears. Thank you. 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 Thank Yeah, no kidding. I related to my dad. He's a jealous guy. I feared and loved him. I never feared my dad. Well, I did. He, <laughs> I loved him. I loved, I loved my dad. You know, I don't think my dad ever spanked me. But I knew he would. Because you ran too fast. <laughs> No, because I'm such a good kid. Because oh. <laughs> he explained to you and told you the consequences. And, uh, Actually, I had two two sisters who got all of it. By the time we got to us boys, my dad and mom had pretty much given up. Yeah. <laughs> she was tired. They had a bunch. Of they had enough crap come from my sisters trying to straighten them out. When we finally come along, it was like, do what you want. <laughs> They learn from the others. So, so Lord, we thank you yes. that you have broken your body for us. Yes. By your stripes we are healed. By your broken yes. body we are fixed. Yes. Yes. Lord, you did this for us. You didn't do it for yourself. Yep. And we remember, Lord, today that your body was broken. Yes. We thank you for this, Lord. And we remember you today as we partake of this. Yes. Thank you for healing, Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you for wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, before we partake of this wine, we consider the body of Christ. We consider your body. Yes. And Lord, we make sure that we have not ought against anyone. Yes. yes. We just make sure that right now, if we do, Lord, help us today to take care of that. Yes. And so, Lord, we remember your death until you come. And your death has done all for us. It's a complete work. You died for all our sins. You shed your blood to wash our sins away. We thank you, Lord, that this blood that we partake of right now is a representation of that blood you spilt on the cross. So we do this in remembrance of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Pastor, you were talking about fear today, and um, when I go to write a passage, it seems like uh, the girls do the same thing you were talking about. Well, I go now if I, you know, that's a that's a big deal that you know that they are fearful of the one stronghold that they have or whatever. But uh, it's they are afraid. You know, people are afraid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, will I go to hell if I... Yes. Yeah, yeah simple things. Yeah. If I smoke a joint, will I go to hell? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. You know, they, I have they bad thoughts. Yeah. You know. yeah, they don't know. That's what the gospel is for. Yes, to help them understand. <laughs> and it's a good thing they're, they're thinking about they are, not yes. doing stuff yeah. wrong. That's right. They're in jail for mm -hmm. doing stuff wrong. You know, so it's a good thing they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Let's study on... Grace and mercy. Oh. Grace and mercy. Yeah. 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 The So anyway, if you want to do a study on grace, on the flying grace, no. study. Yeah. Read Galatians, man. That's not hard. So God bless you all. Okay, just Me too. Time today. Pastor, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.